Um, good morning for those of you who are just joining us. Thank you for spending your Wednesday with the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture. My name is Lilia McEnany and I am an assistant curator at the museum. And as you all know, we are here to continue our fantastic lecture series surrounding our current exhibition, Clearly Indigenous Native Visions Reimagined in Glass. To begin, I'd like to briefly acknowledge the place where this conversation is happening, at least on my end, and even though we are not physically at the museum today and in a virtual space, in Ogopoge within the Tewa world. As a non-Native person living in so-called Santa Fe, I am a guest in the ancestral homelands of the Tewa people. And I wish to acknowledge all of the Indigenous folks and communities, Pueblo, Diné, Apache, and so many others, past, present, and future, who walk on these lands and steward these places. And I would encourage everybody watching today to reflect on the lands on which they reside and how they came to reside there. So we are so pleased to be joined this morning by Ed Archie Noisecat. Good morning. Are we ready to go? Okay, um, <clears throat> my name is Ed Archie Noisecat, and I'm uh, originally from British Columbia, graduated from Emily Carr in 86, and promptly moved to uh, New York as a fine art printmaker working at Tyler Graphics. So I started out in the contemporary art field, actually, as a fine art printmaker, mass, uh, working uh, primarily in lithography, but I did do uh, a lot of other uh, techniques as well. So um, we'll start with the next slide. Um, we uh, this is a, this this uh, poll is actually a double-headed eagle that was done for the uh, the Lawrence family in Suquamish, and I live in the territory of the Suquamish people right now. The house here is uh, is on on. Um, the Salish Sea in uh, Suquamish territory. So we want to acknowledge that. And uh, this piece was done for the Lawrence family about in, in, in 2010, I believe. And it's a old growth red cedar, double-headed eagle, uh, copper inlays representing Charles Lawrence, who was the, the patriarch of the, uh, of the family and was at that time the chief uh, for a couple of terms. But um, we'll move to the next slide. Um, poor photograph, but uh, this was this is this piece is uh, in the uh, National Museum of American Indian uh, Smithsonian in Washington D.C. This was I was uh, I believe the very first artist that was commissioned to uh, create a piece for the the new NMAI Smithsonian Museum in Washington D.C. So my um, <clears throat> we were there for the grand opening. This is the piece that I've made for it. It's called Phases of the Moon. Um, I also gifted them the uh, the original carving uh, that this was done from. So when you see my glass, you can see the the carving marks in the surface, and that indicates the fact that most of my masters are carved from wood, usually um, cedar. Um, <clears throat> On the surface of this piece, you can see all the knife marks with the raven in the forehead of the mask and the phases of the moon going all the way around. So we'll go to the next slide. And then again, that, that screen there was uh, the best of show winner at the Indian Art Northwest in 1998 in Portland, Oregon. Uh, carved on both sides, as you see the, the two dual tricksters that I use a lot uh, on this, on, carved into the surface there, the, the coyote and the raven. Um, next slide. This is uh, another large scale piece I did for the, uh, the Quinaults. Quinaults or Quileutes? Out in La Push, Washington. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this was a bus shelter that's, that's done uh, totally from cedar with uh, uh, an image of uh, a, a, a whale that brought the people a whale, uh, or, or um, um, I'm sorry, a thunderbird that brought the people a whale when they were having uh, difficult times back in, back in the day. So go on to the next slide. I think it shows the back. There you go. That's the thunderbird that uh, delivered a, a, a whale to the people when they were uh, having, uh, having some difficult times 
in the again in the in the posts you see the the dual tricksters that I usually show, which is oh, here actually it's, it's I believe that's a wolf and a raven. So um, the seat there is yellow cedar. The rest of it's all uh, red cedar. Uh, and this is a bus shelter out in La Push, Washington. Next slide. Endangered. This was a, a bronze and glass pole that was uh, about six feet tall or so. Um, <clears throat> but I created this limited edition back um, uh, in 05 or so there, somewhere around there. This uh, the eagle at the, it was, it's called endangered because of the, uh, the, the, the animals that are uh, on the piece or uh, are endangered or protected. The, the, you have the eagle, uh, the northern spotted owl, the frog, which is disappearing uh, throughout the world, and uh, what I call the salmon king or the, the, the grizzly bear with the salmon. Next slide. Nambe, this is a piece that I did a while back. Now this is reclaimed a wood. I believe it's mesquite or mahogany, one of those. It's really hard. Anyway, um, the face of this piece is actually limestone, if you look at it closely. And the, the, the pot on, on her head is actually blown glass. Um, that pot is meant to look like a, a Lonnie Vigil pot because uh, Lonnie is an old friend of mine. We had a, a two-man show in New York, New York City back uh, around the turn of the century, uh, actually before. And, um, and to recognize my friend Lonnie and the incredible work that he does in micaceous pottery, uh, we blew, and blew a, 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 a glass pot that that I hoped looked like the micaceous pottery that, that uh, Lonnie uh, creates. And uh, so I hope I, uh, hope I did, him, did him good. Anyway, next slide. That's a little bronze raven that I carved in cherry wood originally, and then I did it in glass, and then, uh, and then it was done. Anyway, next slide. Um, a bear. Bear bowl that was originally carved in alder, I believe, with the abalone inlays around the edge, and then we did it as a limited edition bronze. But this this uh, edition was incomplete, and the molds were destroyed before um, we could carry on because had 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 a mix up with uh, a former partner. Anyway, so that piece is no longer available, and if you have one, you're pretty damn lucky. Next one. Another incredible bronze and glass limited edition where I only made the one and then it was done and gone. But uh, that mask would fit over your head and it's got glass horns as you see. So those were lost wax cast horns done in um, gaffer crystal. The uh, eyebrows you're looking at or the, the hair is actually copper wire that's made to look like hair and, and uh, it's, it's a, just a really cool piece. And uh, again, there was only one made and then it was done and uh, the molds were destroyed. So this is no longer available and there's probably only one out in the world. Next slide. This piece is, was another limited edition, <clears throat> um, uh, the raven, raven pole with a uh, raven, frog, bear, there with salmon and the um, the sun at the top. That's uh, I believe eight feet tall. That was a limited edition, uh, no longer available. Next slide. Well, that had sterling silver inlays in it as well. Uh, this was a one of a kind piece that was a um, like a it had a light fixture in it with a dimmer switch behind the moon, which is uh, cut from uh, copper and then uh, powder coated so that the inside of the, the moon is actually still copper colored. Uh, so when it's lit up, you get that double color effect. And the, uh, the weaving that's in the middle was woven by my friend um, in Suquamish um, in the, with the frog design. So this, if you, if you look closely at the weaving, the Salish, style weaving 
there are layers of frogs uh, between water and and uh, or uh, between different layers of water in the weaving. So it's it's a really cool piece. It's got a dimmer switch uh, for the light, and it's I, I believe it's about six and a half, seven feet tall. Anyway, next slide. <clears throat> This piece was done uh, again around the turn of the century or maybe even before and it was uh, purchased by the Kamloops Art Gallery up in Kamloops BC. So this is a, a mask that uh, portrays the spirit who the spirit who brings the salmon. As you see, he's got tear tracks that are inlaid uh, abalone shell going down his uh, his his cheeks his, and uh, the uh, the salmon are articulated, so if you turn the little knobs at the bottom, that the three salmon will swim on either side like that. Um, I believe that's my hair on the piece. It could be horse hair, but could be mine too. Next slide. Uh, that is a paper casting limited edition that I did of the sun that's at the top of the uh, the bronze raven pole. If you uh, go back and look at that picture, that is the same sun that's on top of that bronze pole. So um, we can go forward. Go on to the next slide. Uh, this is a limited edition piece that I, I have ongoing. <clears throat> and I have one here in uranium glass, uh, which looks really interesting. I'll show it to you in a bit. But this piece is the one you're looking at there is done in gaffer glass, gaffer crystal, which is uh, pretty much the only glass that I use for my for my casting, for my uh, kiln casting and lost wax casting. Um, uh, that's a it's about sixteen or seventeen inches in diameter, I believe. And anyway, next slide. That's a piece that's no longer available as well. Uh, that was a nice piece. So, and that was large. That was about 18 inches across. Uh, next slide. This one I have uh, sitting right here in my window. Uh, I did a, 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 an interesting treatment to this, which is I polished the, the carved surface of it as well as the back. So, there it is over there in the window, the big, the blue piece. Uh, you can't see it. You can't. Uh, we're not close enough for you to see it, but it's a little different than this. And also, the the stand is powder coated, so it gives it a a more more uh, kind of a really cool effect with the black stand. Anyway, next uh, next slide. This is a one of kind carving done in alder with uh, sterling silver inlays. Um, this is a little hawk mask with a, with a, with a, with a bird on the forehead as well. And if you flip it around, you see a frog in the, in the chin, but around the, the, um, around the, the, uh, Corona of the, of the, of the mask, you can see the blue, the cobalt blue glass that's inlaid there, as well as the opalescent glass in the four, uh, uh, top and bottom and, and sides. Uh, so that was a, 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 a kind of a, a, an interesting uh, uh, work in that I wanted to make these windows of colored glass and it's, it's, it, they, they, had to be, they had to be cut pretty nicely and, and precisely to have the inlays look good. So this, this took, a, took a lot of work. This piece actually is in the collection of, um, of Dorothy Grant actually. Uh, next slide. When I make jewelry, it's usually quite large. Um, I mean, my jewelry is more of uh, more regalia than 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 jewelry because it's so big. Now, this big beaver piece is about about this about this tall, and you know, it's, and that. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> what you're looking at in this piece here is rubies in the eyes and fossilized mammoth ivory in the outer edges. So that's a really cool piece and um, no longer available, sorry, but uh, that's a lot of silver and uh, some really nice uh, fossilized mammoth ivory. Next slide. 
This is a piece that's still available. This is my frog bracelet that's, uh, uh, as you see, frog links that, uh, and we can, we do it in different, you know, we can do it in different lengths. So next slide. My, my classic noise cat salmon bracelet. I make these now with 18 salmon to fit on my wrist. Um, we make them uh, different sizes for, for, the, for your, for your size of, uh, of, of wrist. This one's got um, emeralds in the eyes. I wear one with sapphire. We make them with uh, rubies as well. Um, and we can do them with real, real stones. We can do them with diamonds even, but um, usually sterling silver with, with stones inset. Uh, next slide. Oh, this is a cool piece. I don't make this one anymore, but I still have the mold, but that, that's a beaver piece. And in our language, interestingly enough, uh, beaver, the name, the name for beaver was sklout. And uh, because of the, the trading with the, the fur trappers and so on up in Canada, sklout became our word for, for money. So beaver, Pelt and you know money money all the same name is kind of interesting but uh, this piece because it's because of the name because of the the, the play on the the money theme uh, you see this um, with uh, uh, raw diamonds on the cord there so cool piece anyway next a six foot spindle whirl that was carved. Um, out of cedar for the Nisqually tribe. This is in one of their gas stations, one of their um, stores over, over there, but uh, they wanted something representing uh, a Thunderbird that was six foot across and deep. And uh, if you flip that thing around, you can see a scene of the, the mountains and, and fish, uh, above the eagle's head in the tail of, the, of this thunderbird and in the wings of the thunderbird, you have rain on one side and hail on the other. And that's uh, what, the, what the thunderbird is producing when he's sitting up, uh, up, in, up in the clouds. So um, interesting challenge. I, 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 I chose, I, 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 liked, I like to um, add different layers of texture to my carving to uh, make it more interesting. Anyway, this piece, if you look in the background, there's uh, like a herringbone pattern of uh, cedar weaving in the, in the secondary background or in the background of this piece. So different layers of texture and, um, <clears throat> and carving and color so that, the, the, so that they all separate and you can kind of have a, a pretty nice looking piece. Anyway, next, next slide. Oh, this is called, this was called, um, uh, let me think of the name of it, but uh, it's carved in um, mesquite uh, and mesquite on the bottom, Texas cedar in the, in the, the woman figure, um, holly in the wolf mask and walnut in the, uh, the prow of the, the, the prow wings slash prow that's coming off the back of this uh, thing. Uh, <clears throat> the, the name of it was prowess, P-R-O-W-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E, and uh, it, it's it's interesting piece. It's got sterling silver inlaid into the chief's uh, headdress at the bottom. It's got uh, a blue lace agate in the eyes of the, the, the holly wolf mask that you can separate and wear. If you see the copper bale at the top of that mask. So uh, like a lot of my smaller pieces, they, they have, this has a separate piece that will, will uh, remove and can be worn as a piece of jewelry. Next slide. Oh, cool piece. Uh, this is uh, carved cedar. The raven flying at the top is carved in wood and the, the, the pole itself is, is blown and carved glass. Uh, yellow on the inside, black on the outside, carved through to the yellow with the raven and the, and the sun design. And it's sitting on <clears throat> another cedar carving of a sun. So this is... Uh, it's got multiple layers and the, the, 
the raven at the top was originally meant to be um, done in glass as well. So this would have been mostly a mostly glass piece, but you know, the costs of doing everything the way that I like is pretty steep sometimes. So sometimes I have to settle for a simple wood carving. <laughs> anyway, next, next slide. Uh, another my limited edition bronze. Uh, this is no longer available either, um, but this was called Ascension. <clears throat> and this is uh, a tribute to my father who passed away in uh, 2003, I, I believe. And, and the, um, the, the sun in the middle of the, of the piece that the raven is taking up into the sky has eight rays uh, that are coming off of it. And those represent myself and my, my seven um, siblings. Um, and uh, the, the raven itself, you see a portrait of a man in the middle with his arms up uh, to, be, to form the wings. That represents my father. And the piece is called, again, it's called Ascension. And it's the raven taking my father's spirit up into the sky. Uh, with a sun and with eight rays representing myself and my, my siblings, but uh, it's an interesting piece. Next slide. Uh, again, again, the ascending raven. Uh, the rave, this, this piece, if you can believe it, is the, the raven is in half inch thick core 10 steel, 12 feet tall. So the moon that you see up at the top there is about three feet across. I think it was 40 inches uh, done in stainless steel. So this piece is just, is massive. It's almost uh, almost 15 feet tall. Uh, it's up in, um, up in Westchester County at a, at a private collector's home. But uh, uh, that was the original Trickster's Moon that I made. You can see all the, the different, car, different characters, uh, you know, on the wings and the tail and so on. So, Next slide. Uh, one of my wall hangings, this one's called the shapeshifter. I've done dif different uh, colorings of this, but that's the frog is overlaid over the center, um, or the center spindle whirl. Uh, it's called the shapeshifter and it has, it has a, a sisiulth or a double headed serpent that's coming up up out of the bottom and those serpents are turning into wolves, which then are communing with the frog that is in the middle. The frog is a, a messenger um, uh, between, between uh, worlds. So uh, it's, uh, it's a, another, another, another really cool story piece. But I, I like to do the layering with the, with the light passing through with the, um, you know, with my print, printmaking background, uh, cut steel and aluminum metal really kind of gives me that that those surfaces that I can separate and make make you know do 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 some really cool spatial things with. So that's uh, this is why I really like steel. Uh, next slide. Uh, blown and carved mask. This is done with a mold, and this piece I believe was in the. Um, the show there at Mayac, um, and the collectors uh, can't let it go on to travel. So unfortunately, this one does not go any further than the Santa Fe show, but um, at least you have it here. Uh, now I carved, I carved the original head of the blow, the head for a blow mold for this piece. Um, I saw the, uh, the there. There's a pair of stone masks that are in a museum. Uh, or two different museums somewhere. And uh, they were in a book, uh, Northwest Coastal Art book. Um, and uh, I saw these stone masks. And I, uh, at that time was talking with Preston Singletary about uh, collaborating maybe. And he said, well, we should do a blow mold. And I, and I was like, he described to me what I needed to do. So I went ahead, I carved this head out of, out of cedar and then, uh, Made, we made a, a two-part blow mold. So the thing hinges and closes like this around it. So when you take your bubble and put it into the, into the top and blow it, um, it takes the shape of the mask and then you take it off the pipe and, and, and uh, you have uh, masks of different colors that you can carve. And uh, Preston made a number of these and I made a few. Um, 
this one's a frog uh, it's a frog mask next uh this is another one that i did this has got walnut carved horns uh, uh overlaid in the glass and this is called shaman's trance uh there's a lot of shamanistic imagery here especially from the uh the northern um people so you see the otters that come down into the cheeks over here on the left side and the horns of course which represent the mountain goats uh, uh headdresses that the northern northern uh people wear the and, and my my uh classic double-headed snake on the back of it uh the sisiot that's on the back there so i i, re I really like this piece and uh it's one of my favorites. Next. This was my foray into working with hard glass. <clears throat> when I was in the studio out in, uh, in Santa Fe there, uh, my neighbor was um, an expert in uh, working with this hard glass, flame worked glass. So uh, I took up with him uh, collaborating on this and made this series of goblets. Um, I called it this the supernatural series, I believe. What it is is, is different birds. On, on the left, as you see, is a raven that's sitting on top with a with a or or I'm sorry, a thunderbird that's sitting on top of uh of the in the goblet with a lightning bolt being the, the stem. Uh the middle one is a white raven sitting above the clouds. Uh and the third one is a phoenix, of course sitting uh, above the flame. So the, this were, these were sold as a set. Uh, I believe I sold, the, sold them through the um, Smithsonian in, uh, in DC, actually. Somebody in DC owns these. Next, uh, next picture. This is my, <clears throat> my limited edition um, lost wax cast salmon that I call, um, um, what's it called? Uh, the title will come to me, but these are, these are lost wax casts. I carved the originals in, in cedar and uh, made molds so that these are um, actually freestanding pieces. There's a male and a female as usual. Whenever I'm, I'm depicting uh, the salmon, I usually usually have a male and a female together. And as you see here, the front one is, uh, is a female with the eggs and so on. So these are still available. Um, couldn't tell you what number we're up to, but uh, it's a cool piece. Um, next slide. This is a massive piece uh, that the box is a blown, blown into a blow mold. So I, I made a, a steel box, heavy, heavy steel box. That's, I believe that's 20 inches by 12 by, by something like that. Anyway, the lid on that, as you might notice, is, is walnut with the inlaid glass in the top, but the, and it's got a, a, a blue Thunderbird, I believe on the face of it on the other side. I, uh, for some reason, I'm showing you the back side here, but this this is a blown glass piece that's done in a blow mold, a big rectangular blow mold. And uh, we only made one of this. So there's just, there's just this one out there in the world. So um, next slide. These are the... Uh, these are the bronze salmon that I carved at, at uh, that I that I cast at at um, IAIA. I, I was invited down to be a, an artist in residence at, at IA uh, when they opened their brand new foundry. So I was the first artist in their foundry down there. <clears throat> so I produced these. I, I actually made thirteen salmon in this. Uh, this run and they all went on the uh, the steel and glass table that I made at the same time, which became uh, the vanishing run. Now that piece is up and up in Whistler at the at the uh, museum right now at SLCC, and uh, I used the 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 mold that I make my glass uh, salmon out of to make these bronze. So. Um, 
That's why they look so similar. Uh, but the glass are solid, the, the bronze are hollow. Uh, next slide. And that's uh, Salmon King. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, the Salmon Table, the, um, the Vanishing Run. <laughs> anyway, uh, steel table, glass top, uh, crushed glass underneath the salmon uh, to represent the, uh, the rivers running yellow. When, uh, I mean, when, uh, the, what inspired this piece is when uh, I heard the, uh, the mine tailings were, were spilling into the rivers, in, into the Animas River down in, uh, down in uh, the, the corner of, um, I think it was uh, down in the southwest corner of, of Utah, I believe. But anyway, they, <clears throat> they, they were terrible. They were polluting the rivers with the, the mine trailings and the river was running yellow. And so the, the, these salmon are sitting on a bed of crushed um, brown glass so that when it's lit, it looks, it looks like they're swimming in, in yellow water anyway. Next slide. That was the sunrise ceremony on, on um, Alcatraz uh, a couple of years ago. Next slide. Um, <clears throat> I was asked by Greenpeace to take part in this, this uh, the acts of resistance. Um, I was one of uh, seven artists that was asked to make a 40 foot long banner, to design a 40 foot long banner to hang from the uh, Steelworkers Bridge in Vancouver. And uh, when, they, when they suspended the people with the banners and uh, from the bridge that day, they stopped uh, a huge tanker from, from, uh, from going uh, out into the, um, through the bridge. Anyway, uh, it was a big thing by Greenpeace up in Vancouver and it was successful. That's my banner right there in the middle there, the, the, the green and black one. So that is now, that now belongs to the Museum of Vancouver up in Vancouver. They did a show uh, recently of those banners and that's, that was where this, this poster came from. Next slide. There's another view of it. You can see the the um, the protesters hanging from the from the the from the bridge with the banners showing proudly. Next slide. Uh, current works. I think we're done with the uh, slideshow. But that's a, sp a spindle whirl on the left. It's called the Sea to Sky. Um, with Purple Heart. The middle one is, is the uh, example of uh, the Black Crawler, which is my auntie's uh, story of the, the, the woman warrior song being brought to her by this uh, spirit called the Black Crawler. And that's a mask representing that in the middle. Uh, and then another shapeshifter on the right. So next slide. Uh, these are some of my... Um, these are all of the uh, the fused glass pieces that we have uh, re available right now. Uh, some of these are traveling with uh, the uh, Clearly Indigenous show and uh, we have uh, we, got, we have them showing in other places. I have them available here out of my studio as well. So they're, they are readily available if, if anyone's interested and they're fairly large. The um, the Wolves of the Sea, for instance, the red one is, uh, I believe it's uh, 24 wide by 20 tall or something like that. So they're fair, they're a good size. They're all on the web, on my website, which is uh, noisecatart.com. Next slide. More of the uh, portfolio, again, the uh, Bear Mother Moon Mask in the, in the top middle with a red uh, sun eagle and um, bringing the light on the left, which is the fused glass and the, and the salmon again. Next slide. Uh, some of our smaller items in glass, uh, which are available in uh, different gift shops. We're at the Bainbridge Island Museum gift shop. Uh, 
and we're about to be at Mohai in Seattle. So, um, and of course we're at SLCC in Whistler. So next. Uh, this is very new, some of our newer items. This is uh, soaps that you're looking at in glycerin soaps, uh, both um, opaque and clear. And we have a lot of fun uh, playing with these colors. If you look at the salmon in, in the middle picture there, the, I mean, we can, it's just so much fun playing. They look like gummies, but these are actually soaps and they're, uh, they're very, very nice. When I was growing up, we never had fancy soaps like this. So, so now that I'm grown up, I can have all the fancy soap that I want. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, my Auntie Martina on the left, they're holding the umbrella that I gifted to her, but we have umbrellas and masks and earrings and rings of incredible design cards. Uh, that's a raven. It's kind of, that's distorted a little bit, but uh, it's more, it's kind of squished in. So the ring is a little bit more elongated than that. But anyhow, that's got a black pearl in the raven's mouth. Next. There you go. I guess that's it. I'm having um, the uh, our uh, press release just came out uh, announcing the uh, dedication and awakening of the the this uh, 20 foot pole that I've uh, we've installed up in Whistler. So, um, if you go on Facebook, you can find on my Facebook. You can find the uh, the the announcement. The the um, the press release. Uh, so uh, if you go on my website, noisecatart.com, you can find all the works that are available and announcements and the shows that I've taken part in, the uh, the, the Greenpeace um, work and uh, on some of the other projects that we've uh, taken part in, including Canoe Journey and so on. So uh, next slide, that might be it. Yeah, and that's the entrance into my show that I had during the pandemic up in up in uh, Whistler at the SLCC that that was uh, walking into the show you can see the um, we are wolves pole over there right by the entrance way that piece is 10 feet tall. Next. This piece, this is one of my favorite pieces of all time, this is the 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 black snake. And, and Orca on the top, the main part of this piece are all carved from one piece of alder. So I, I took a, a half log of alder and um, laid out this design of uh, an Orca and a black snake and sketched it out and then carved it out with my chainsaw first uh, and then very carefully finished it out with my knives and in studying the piece trying to figure out how I should stand it up I was going to put it on a pedestal and do all kinds of things but uh turns out that this I designed this this salmon in in walnut <clears throat> very heavy oh, two and a quarter inch thick walnut and uh they and then joined them into the bottom through uh Japanese joinery uh and uh, so they made up the feet and it just worked perfectly. So this piece is uh, the, the, the alder up in the air is suspended over the black walnut uh, salmon that are in the bottom. So it's a, it's a statement on the, uh, the ships, the oil, the oil that's being shipped to the Salish Sea through the pipelines. So obviously we want to stop uh, all of the pipelines we've been we've having having some success um, with some of them and uh, there's a main one going through British Columbia that uh, that we have yet to uh, take down so our work is far from done as you know the our the earth our mother earth is uh, having a pretty strong reaction to all the humans here so uh, we we need to do something to try and uh, alleviate the, 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 the problems that we're having. Um, maybe we should all switch to electric vehicles. Anyway, uh, next slide. This is my bear mother moon mask being, being danced by um, 
our our friends uh, by the by the youth um, ambassadors up up at Whistler. So uh, they did a presentation during the opening of the show up there, and um, this is uh, them doing the doing the the dance in, and um, one of the young ladies is is uh, dancing the uh, bear mother mask. So there you go. Next slide. Nasty check in that, but <clears throat> that's the um, that's the bear dancer uh, with a portrait of my cousin Redmond, uh, Redmond's face as a bear dancer. Uh, this is the this is the twenty foot pole that I that I pieced together for the for the museum up there. The uh, it's red and yellow cedar. That red cedar came out of the Olympic National Forest down here in Washington State. That piece of wood was gifted to me by my friend Pete Peterson, who is Suquamish. And then um, the other the other uh, logs that that made up the rest of the pole. If you go to the next slide. You see the uh, the Thunderbird at the top is carved from yellow cedar. So this is unusual in that this pole is carved from both red and yellow cedar and they're stacked up. So the right at the very top, you have a uh, uh, Thunderbird with the, the eight foot wingspan. And then the next slide, that's a portrait of my great grandfather, uh, Nkasusa or uh, uh, Chief Harry Peters in the chest of the Thunderbird. So below the Thunderbird, you see the th lightning bolt coming down. Uh, in the final piece, um, we, uh, we, we had a, a, a copper lightning bolt made that's in heavy eighth inch thick copper and it overlays that whole bolt so that it's uh, nicely polished. And my auntie's uh, black crawler mask is mounted right over the center of that lightning bolt so that the it's it's as though the thunderbird is delivering that story to my auntie in the shape of the the black crawler mask so um there's a lot going on in this piece as well this piece has been raised it's it's standing now in the museum uh we have yet to awaken it and give it a blessing which is what we're going to do in a couple of weeks on the 22nd uh, which I believe is Earth Day for uh, most folks, um, uh, is the day that we will dedicate and awaken this poll. Next slide. There's uh, Redmond, my young apprentice, and our wonderful dog, Bamboo, at my feet there. She's always with me. And uh, this piece is now done. Next slide. That's as it was laying on the floor. This is this picture is taken on the right is taken from a cherry picker. So this is uh, way up in the air. That piece is 20 feet tall. It looks awfully cool. This does not have the, the black crawler mask mounted on it yet. But if you go to the if you go to the press release that that I that we just put out on Facebook and uh, the SL, the Squamish Lilawad Cultural Center is is releasing their is putting out a press release this morning as well. So if you go on Facebook, you should be able to find that announcement and um, and see the piece as it stands right now uh, in you know in in the museum. So um, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Ed. I have so many questions for you, um, and I'm just really excited to have been given the opportunity to learn more about. Um, your work. And so while we're waiting for some questions to come in from the audience, um, I'd love to ask you a little bit about how you got started in the art world. I know you got started with printmaking, right? And I think something that is so striking about your work is the incredible mixed media, how you move so seamlessly in between um, glass, steel, bronze, inlay, jewelry. The, um, there's pretty much seemingly no um, direction that you won't go in. So can you tell us just a little bit about your trajectory within the art world? Yeah, um, as, as I said, I started out at, uh, at Tyler Graphics right out of art school, Tyler Graphics in New York. And at Tyler, um, while I was there, he was, Ken himself was working on a, a screen, a freestanding screen with David Hockney. So Hockney was there working while I was there. Uh, Frank Stella was there. I mean, this was just mind blowing work that I was getting to take take part in right 
Um, <clears throat> and at the same time that I was there, I was I was actually hand painting Roy Lichtenstein um, um, brushstroke sculptures in cherry wood as well. So being there, while I was there, I got to see <clears throat> this this incredible work being made for David Hockney and for and for Frank Stella. These different pieces that they're made being made on hand handmade paper that they were making in house, huge monstrous sheets of paper. Alan Shields was working. I mean, they, these just mind blowing art being made right in front of me, and I'm actually you know getting to take part in some of it and getting to pack some of it up and so on. So. It was very, very exciting being there at the time that I was there and uh, just, you know, being in the same space as some of these artists that, that we worked with. So uh, having been right out of art school, I mean, my mind, I mean, I have since found that I'm highly, highly visual, right? So, I mean, I if I see something, I, I believe I can carve it, I can make it, right? So that's kind of the way that I've kind of gone through my, my career now. So. I, I have to see something to be able to make it. So um, I guess that's where the visual comes from <laughs> in the visual arts. But um, <clears throat> that was how, that was, that was kind of the eye-opening experience that I had at Tyler Graphics and at other uh, print shops afterwards as well. I mean, I worked in several really high-end print shops as, in Soho as well for Solo Press and, um, so all these artists that I worked with were just so well, you know, well into their careers that, you know, you just stand back and, and absorb everything that they're doing. And so that's kind of where the, the fearlessness comes from, you know, first off um, to, to be, to be, <clears throat> to be consistent and, and to be able to, to, to go where you feel like going is, is, is a, is a really strong, um characteristic to work with but you have to be you have to ha you have to have that inquisitiveness to try out all these different things i mean i got into japanese joinery i mean i did lithography i did i mean i mean i've gotten into you know all kinds of different things lost wax casting glass for christ's sake i mean you know <clears throat> um but with the with the with the confidence that you gain from working in such a high-end shop like Tyler, um, I think that kind of set me loose to, uh, on the world, you know, to be able to just do whatever I felt like doing. And now I, I, I just don't really have any containment as far as what I think I can do. You know, if I see something and I can, you know, make a drawing of it, I think I can make it. So. That's what gives me the freedom to be able to just go out and 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 do uh, what I do. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, so I guess to build off of that, what is it about glass in particular that speaks to you? Why do you enjoy working with glass as opposed to all of these other mediums? Well, glass, glass, glass gives you uh something that uh, that most other materials don't give you you know it, i mean with the glass that i'm working with is 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 gaffer glass and it's uh, it's crystal usually sometimes um uranium glass but for the most part it's all crystal and when you're working with that it's pure color you know and it's it's totally translucent so you're working with clear color you're adding that to your works which are usually pretty solid wood or stone or whatever right so it adds a dimension to the work that you don't necessarily have available to you unless you're using something like that so it, it just quite literally adds more dimension to the work you know yeah and you know a lot um over the course of this lecture series um i've heard from a lot of different glass artists that they enjoy glass in particular because you're not fully in control of it. And the glass will kind of do what it wants to do. And I've, I've heard that from potters as well. And is that something that you experience or what is, how do you experience a sense of control um, with, in, in comparison with something like carving? It's, it's actually got, I, I, I think that I have a lot more control than, 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 they're, than they're kind of letting on they have. I mean, I, 
obviously am carving the master in wood because and, and and you know assessing you know where the thickness needs to be in the thinness and so on or the you know piercing through a piece to to get a full effect i mean it's a it, it's it's a process i think that um i don't know I, I guess i've just developed over time i mean it's just just my eye you know yeah and there's so many different ways of working with glass um I think there are some methods that allow for a little bit more control than others. On that note, I'm I'm also working like a printmaker. See, and as a lithographer, I mean, I have absolute control of what I'm laying down. I mean, the 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 tackiness of the ink, the oiliness of the ink. I mean, the 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 amount, you know, how much the pe the the stone loves the water. I mean, there's a lot. There's more to it than just you know putting ink down in the open, you know, on the black spots. I mean, so. With that approach, I mean, the the kiln casting kind of gives me control, absolute control over what I'm doing because I put in this the exact right amount of glass into the mold. The, the mold has to be made properly, first of all, so that it doesn't, you know, fall apart or, uh, uh, and you want really incredible detail. So uh, I have a lot of control over both the mold, how the mold's made, and the the glass that's going into it. So, it's uh, my approach is very much like a fine art printmaker. You know. So. Yeah, I could hear that when you were speaking, saying this is one edition. You know. Um, yeah. So that's really interesting. It's a really interesting way to think about that. Huh. Um, so I don't see any questions from the audience yet. Just a lot of comments thanking you for your time and sharing your expertise. I have some, I have actually a few more questions um, in terms of collaboration. Um, I love the Nambe piece that you shared um, that you did in honor of Lonnie Vihill. Um, and you also mentioned some collaborative work with Preston. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering how, what role collaboration typically plays in your work? Well, as a trained printmaker, of course, my one of my main expertise is is collaborating because you have to be able to collaborate with an artist that whose work you're printing or that you, that you're making. So, um, that kind of that was I, I I was trained to work with with people with other artists uh, in my in my printmaking uh, my schooling. So um, that. I, I've always, I've always uh, been able to uh, work with other people to collaborate, and I think that's kind of what allows me to like go into Pratt and and teach, you know, large scale carving and so on. Because, uh, you know, I, I can talk all day while I'm doing the thing. You know, uh, it's it's just uh, it's just what I what I can do. So, yeah. So. Um, to wrap up, would you mind telling us about those pieces that you just gave us a brief preview of? Sure. Here, let me unplug this. I'll go over here. Yeah. This, piece, this one right here. This is the uh, the thunder, the thunder world. And if you if you look at it closely, I polished the front surface. Um, I don't usually do that. I usually leave all the carving marks in the piece. But this one, I've, I've taken a different approach. Uh, so it, it looks different than the usual. It's got more of a polish. This is the, uh, the black crawler. And this is, done, this is a uh, color shifting glass uh, crystal from uh, Gaffer Glass. It's beautiful. Uh, and over here, I have the iridium glass, um, the sun eagle done. And I have a black light behind it right now, so which gives you that 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 glow. So I can I can turn the light off, and so you can see what it looks like without without black light. Wow! So that's the piece, just plain glass. Oh, over here I have the master carving. So so there you have carved wood and glass mm -hmm. and just to just to finish that off i will put this down again and up here i have the master carving for the black crawler so this 
is what I carve. You know, it's just a simple piece of red cedar with a really cool symmetrical grain. Now, I look at the grain of the wood uh, before I start carving a piece. So it's this very important because that's, it's all coming through. It all comes through in the glass, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. <clears throat> wow. Fantastic. Well, thank you. So, through. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Ed. This was such a fantastic conversation. And this lecture series is actually wrapping up next month with Dan Friday and Raven Sky River. Um, thank you all for being here this morning. And thank you, Ed, for um, sharing so much incredible knowledge and expertise. And go to noisecatart.com to, to see the works or and, uh, and the uh, 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 events coming up. So thank you.